quantum coders are going to be the most sought after professionals in the quantum computing industry. Without these specialized devs, businesses won't be able to translate real world problems to code that quantum computers can run. However, most people think that to become a quantum coder, you need a PhD in either quantum physics or computer science. In this video, I'll show you five tips for becoming a quantum coder without an advanced degree. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Konstantinos Kragianis. In my day job, I'm Director of Quantum Computing Services at Prativity, a global consulting firm. On this channel, I cover all aspects of the quantum computing industry, including topics like encryption and AI. So let's get right to how you can become part of this rapidly expanding field, all without a PhD. And be sure to stick around for the end of the video, where I give a bonus backdoor way to break into the industry for those with a particular set of skills. Uh, I live in New York City, and you used to have to live in a major city like this to be involved in quantum. But the truth is, if you could watch this YouTube video, you already have access to everything you need to work with quantum computing. As with all tech jobs, being a quantum coder has some prerequisites. Before diving into the complex world of quantum computing, it's important to have a solid understanding of some of the fundamentals of computer science and mathematics. This includes at least some experience with a programming language like Python, an understanding of algorithms, and, oh, you're gonna kill me when I tell you this, an understanding of linear algebra. You might try reading a book like this for a little help with linear algebra, especially as it relates to quantum computing. One more area you're gonna to wanna to bone up on would be machine learning, because a lot of quantum use cases are gonna involve quantum machine learning, and it'll be important to understand the basic principles of how classical machine learning works. In addition to books, there are lots of online free classes and computer-based trainings that you could find in all the areas that I mentioned so far. But if you find you're struggling with that self-directed route and using tutorials and things like that, you might wanna actually pay for something like an online bootcamp or class with an instructor. Don't get discouraged by this major prerequisite step. Once you get a solid understanding of these areas, It'll make working with quantum computing a whole lot easier, and it'll ensure a solid foundation for you to build your career on. While you don't need a PhD in physics to become a quantum coder, a basic understanding of quantum mechanics is still important for anyone who wants to work in this field. You need to be comfortable with concepts such as superposition, entanglement, and how all these strange sounding things turn into qubits and quantum gates that we can actually do computation with. Now, before you panic, Realize that if you're watching this video and you're interested in quantum computing, chances are you've already started exploring some of this and this is already fascinating to you. Good news is that it's only gonna get more fascinating as you start to dig in and understand how these concepts really work. As with the last tip, you can fill in gaps in this area using books and free online classes and you can even watch videos. What's interesting though, as we'll get to later on in the video is, some of these basic concepts and how they apply to quantum computing will actually also be covered by the various tutorials in the coding platforms that you're gonna encounter. So you're gonna get some of that a little later on too, but it doesn't hurt right now to fill in some gaps. The quantum computing community is expanding rapidly. And there are a lot of places online where you could connect with enthusiasts and even experts in the field. These communities can provide valuable resources such as tutorials, coding challenges, and even mentorship opportunities. Some popular online communities you can join include the Quantum Computing Stack Exchange and the Quantum Open Source Foundation. Hackathons and coding competitions are another great way to get involved and to sharpen your skills. Sometimes these aren't standalone events, but are appended to a conference that might be free to attend as well. So be sure to really read the fine print when you're looking for these. Some of these events allow you to use hardware and software resources you might not be able to gain access to otherwise. A good example would be the dreaded queue or wait time to run a quantum computer on the cloud. At some of these events, you might find that you're put in a priority queue, so your jobs run quicker which is kind of exciting. One of the biggest benefits to hackathons though, is that you might be placed in a team. You might actually be collaborating with other coders who could have a higher level of skill than you, and you could come away learning something extra from them. Quantum computers are accessed on the cloud. 
Uh, these are giant temperamental machines and very few companies are going to have them in their data centers anytime soon. The good news is that means you can learn how to use them from anywhere in the world and in theory work on them as a professional from anywhere in the world too. There are several development platforms that allow you to program these quantum computers. Some are developed specifically for a uh, company's quantum computer. For example, D-Wave has the Leap platform for their actual machines. And some are now reaching more types of machines. For example, Qiskit allows you to program IBM computers, but also other companies such as IonQ. I'd recommend starting with Qiskit first because it's been around the longest and it has the most documentation and the most examples that you could work through. And then you can kind of get a feel for it and then maybe branch out into others. I put links to the most popular development platforms in the video description. Note that with all of them, you'll find that you can fine tune your code and your algorithms first, run them on simulators to see how they perform, and then actually use backend targets of real quantum computers online, ones that are either free, sometimes with a long queue time, or ones that you pay for per shot. Cybersecurity is another way to break into quantum. It's sort of a backdoor approach, if you will. You might recognize where I'm standing as the Mr. Robot apartment building from the TV show. But the truth is that if you are a cybersecurity expert, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to need help with post-quantum cryptography. And this could lead to other sort of tangential connections. Imagine if you're already working in cybersecurity, people will be asking you potentially about the threat to cryptography that quantum computers pose, and that'll get you involved in having those conversations. Also, people are interested in use cases with quantum computers such as anomaly detection. So even though you'll still have to do the prerequisites we discussed in this video, you'll be able to focus on one particular use case and potentially actually implement it quicker. So you'll focus on how quantum machine learning will allow you to spot anomalies and potential indicators of compromise. And at the end, that kind of knowledge can be translated to other use cases in the future. I hope you found these tips helpful wherever you may be in your personal quantum computing journey. Uh, please consider subscribing so you won't miss any other videos where I cover all aspects of the quantum industry and uh, hope to see you next time.